If you're looking to lose belly fat, it's important to know that there are different levels on how to address it. Some people need really minimal intervention to achieve a belly fat loss goal, whereas others need more specific steps and strategies. So today I'm sharing how to lose belly fat explained at three different levels, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. My name's Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's nutrition human performance. And today's video is sponsored by Kettle and Fire. More on them in a bit. Okay, so each of the strategies in each of these sections really build a upon the next and you shouldn't really be using the advanced strategies without first using the beginner strategies. And if you're just starting your journey, you really should start with a beginner level because there are quite a lot of people who find that even these simple strategies done every single day can make a big difference at reducing belly fat. And if you find that those strategies aren't working for you, then you can move on to the intermediate and so on. These are strategies that I use with my clients with the thousands of men and women around the world that are following my intermittent fasting programs. They've also actually been studied in research to help reduce belly Fat. So let's start off with the beginner level, which combines three different strategies, walking daily for 30 minutes, increasing protein and removing all snacks. This combo helps to reduce the storing hormone insulin, especially between meals, which then makes it so the body can more easily shift back and forth from burning fat to carbohydrates as fuel. This is called metabolic flexibility. And in order to actually burn belly fat, your body needs to know how to burn fat as fuel. And when insulin is low, that's when it's tapping into those fat burning mechanisms of lipolysis. This beginner level also takes advantage of helping to naturally reduce the stress hormone cortisol, which cortisol high levels of it are directly tied to weight gain around the belly. So at minimum in this beginner level, making sure that you're getting in 30 minutes of walking per day, ideally outside. If you get the walk outside, that's where you get the extra benefits of reducing the stress hormone cortisol. But even if you can't get outside, even if it's like not great weather and you have to go to the gym or use an indoor treadmill, getting 30 minutes of walking every single day can actually be really beneficial for tapping into fat burning mechanisms if you are consistent with it. In fact, I've shared studies in the past on how about 30 minutes per day can be very helpful, but the key really is consistency. Doing about 30 minutes of walking three or four times per week doesn't quite do the same thing as doing 30 minutes of walking every single day. And at this beginner level, focusing on increasing protein is another crucial factor. Whenever I meet with a client, one of the first things we do is address their total protein intake because 99 out of 100 times, they're not getting nearly enough protein and specifically from high quality sources because eating higher quality protein like those that you get from complete sources like eggs greek yogurt meat chicken fish have actually been linked to less abdominal fat which you can check out my full video on some of the best proteins to use with this video right up here and then lastly at this beginner level removing snacks this step specifically focuses on helping to naturally lower the storing hormone insulin taking these breaks from eating throughout the day where you're actually having meals and then no snacks makes it so the body actually gets a chance to lower the insulin level and turn on fat burning. Ideally, anywhere between two to three full meals with adequate protein is the goal, but it is crucial that you're actually getting satiated from those meals, which one really great tool to do that is actually by adding in collagen rich foods into your meal to make you more satisfied. By adding in collagen rich foods like bone broth, it's been found to help naturally boost satiety and prevent cravings between meals, which is why I love today's sponsor, Kettle and Fire. Kettle and Fire is a really amazing and delicious bone broth company. They slowly simmer bones from grass fed cows to make sure that they're getting as much collagen as they possibly can into your bone broth. One of my favorite things about Kettle and Fire is that it is just so convenient. I mean, yes, I have and I can make bone broth, but I don't always have the time or like the foresight to actually make bone broth for the meals I need for that week. So knowing that I have high quality collagen packed bone broth that's in my pantry that I can just take out and add to pretty much any meal and really help to boost the satiety of that meal makes my life so much easier. And using Kettle and Fire makes it so simple to sneak in a lot of collagen into pretty much any type of meal. I love adding Kettle and Fire into soups and stews and chilies. And of course you can even sip on it on the side of your meal if that's just something you enjoy. Because Kettle and Fire comes in a ton of amazing delicious flavors that can match any type of taste preference or any type of recipe. And Kettle and Fire is super generous and they're offering my community 20% off your bone broth purchase when you use code autumnbaits at checkout. You definitely don't wanna miss out on that discount. So I'll have it linked down description below so you guys can check that out and stock up on Kettle and Fire. Okay, so now we enter into the intermediate section. These are tools that you can use if you've already used everything that I just talked about in the beginner section and you haven't seen the results you're looking for and you need like a little bit extra. And for this section, we're also going to be combining three different strategies. Remember, still built upon the beginner strategies, but now we're adding on three new ones. And the three new strategies in this intermediate level is 
adding on resistance training, intermittent fasting, and removing flours and added sugars. Resistance training, which can mean a lot of different things. It can be just body weight training, like push-up style training, or you can be like CrossFit style level of intensity. There's a lot of wiggle room within that resistance training category, but resistance training really helps to increase muscle mass and increase toning. And by doing so helps to absorb excess sugar from the blood supply. By absorbing that excess sugar, it helps to make the body more easily get back into a state of fat burning. Plus resistance training has actually been found to be better than cardio at reducing belly fat. A good rule of thumb is to aim for about 20 to 30 minutes of resistance training three to five times per week. Any less than three times per week, I've not seen a ton of benefits, but how you break up your workouts will really depend on the frequency. So I have shared in the past how I like to break up my workouts for resistance training. You can check it out right up here if you want those details. So in this intermediate category, we're also focusing on removing flours and added sugars. That's because these foods are so insulin spiking. And the more we spike insulin, the more likely we can become insulin resistance. And insulin resistance is directly tied to weight gain around the belly. This is really one that can be in either the beginner or the intermediate level. But I have found that for some people, even just by first addressing the protein, it helps to balance out a lot of the negatives of some of those flours and sugars if they are in the diet in small amounts. But if that just wasn't cutting it, then this is where you can take that next step of removing the flours and sugars. And this includes includes whole wheat flours, which actually has pretty much the same impact on our blood sugar levels and our storing hormone insulin as just regular flour. The only flours that I found that can still be used at this time are the almond flour and coconut flours. And that's because they're made with almonds and coconuts that aren't really going to be insulin spiking. And then the third component of this intermediate level is incorporating intermittent fasting, which really this is kind of like the next step once you've already started to remove snacks. In fact, you might even find that you're just naturally getting about 12, 13 hours of fasting just by simply not snacking. Intermittent fasting takes a lot of those similar benefits from not having snacks to the next level. Now I have literally hundreds of videos on this topic alone, but a really great place to start is even just a 12 hour fast. You can actually get a lot of progress as we saw with Guilen with just a 12 hour fast, but it is important to know what type of fasting length will be best for your goals and what you should be aiming for. So I do have a free quiz that can help you determine how long your intermittent fast should be depending on your goals. I'll have that link down description below as well if you guys want to check that out. Okay, now let's go on to the advanced category. This is where if you've done the beginner, you've done the intermediate, maybe you made some progress, but you're still not quite at your goal, then we can add on these additional next step strategies. But again, these should not be added in without also using these other tips that I just mentioned. So for this advanced section, we're still adding in all the previous steps, plus sleep training and eating a generally lower carbohydrate diet. Now, low carb eating might be necessary if you are insulin resistant or if you're very carb sensitive. Carbohydrates are the foods that most spike the storing hormone insulin. And the foods that are going to really raise the carbohydrate level of what you're eating are going to be those that are really, really starchy. Think things like potatoes and grains. I personally don't count macros and I don't recommend counting macros, quite frankly, because it's not necessary. You can just see the results from the men and women within my community who are not tracking and how they are able to achieve their goals. But focusing on low glycemic foods is one of the easiest ways to just naturally eat less carbohydrates. Starches, even healthier ones like sweet potatoes might just be too starchy for you at this time. And note that I say at this time, because this can definitely change, especially once adding in resistance training, which does tend to make someone more easily able to tolerate carbohydrates. And for various food ideas and meal ideas, you can actually check out a lot of my recipes. I have over a hundred recipes in my complete intermittent fasting bundle that use low glycemic foods and make it really delicious and very simple. So if you guys want to check that out, I'll also have that linked down description below as well. These are the programs that the men and women within my community have used to help them achieve their goals. Okay, and then the other part of this advanced level is sleep training. Now sleep training is something that really could fall into any of these categories, beginner, intermediate, or advanced, but I've just found that most people won't really take this seriously until they first addressed all of the other strategies that I just talked about. Because even just one night of poor sleep can actually increase our insulin resistance the very next day. And remember, insulin resistance is directly tied to weight gain around the belly. Plus poor sleep tends to make us crave sugary, starchy foods that will work against the goal of losing belly fat. So some of the most effective tools for sleep training is to shut off all technology 30 to 60 minutes before bed. I mean your phone, your laptop, your TV, all of it. Another amazing tool is actually just 
having a bedtime. <laughs> if you know that you need to get up at 6 a.m. and you're aiming for eight hours of sleep, that means you need to be asleep by 10 p.m., which means you really should be getting into bed at around like 9.30, 9.40 p.m. so you have enough time to actually wind down and fall asleep by 10 p.m. So yes, we're going back to the basics, but most people are not even doing this very simple basic strategy of having their own sleep schedule to even allow for enough sleep to reap these benefits. Now we talked about intermittent fasting being one really amazing tool to help you achieve your goals. If you want my intermittent fasting formula that I personally use to help my clients, you can check out this video next. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science-backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come out new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.